I think I may have found the best laptop to build a Hackintosh with in 2020. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the channel everyone. It feels like it has literally been forever since I uploaded a new video to the channel. I hope all of you are doing well in these weird and terrible times of the coronavirus. No, but in all seriousness, I hope you guys are all doing well and taking the necessary precautions like washing your hands and whatever else to stay corona free. Although you probably should have been washing your hands before this pandemic, but that's here nor there. We got a video to talk about. If you're new to the channel, my name is Dylan and I am here to decode tech one video at a time. And if you're into tech videos and learning some stuff about tech, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to the right of it to be notified when I do post new content on the channel. All right, with all that out of the way, let's get to talking about what I was saying in that little snippet about a really sweet laptop that I think may be the best laptop to build with for a Hackintosh build in 2020. Some of you may know that I actually recently built a Hackintosh for myself with an i9 and I had a whole video about that build and everything, but I wanted to test more than just the desktop space when it came to Hackintosh builds and dabble in some laptop based Hackintosh builds to really see what I could get going. With that curiosity spark, I decided to do some research through various forums and through Google for different users that had laptops that they used to build a Hackintosh with and the success rate had to be relatively high. The last criteria that this laptop had to meet was it had to be cheaper than an actual Mac laptop because if it's not cheaper than an actual Mac, there's no point in using it as a Hackintosh in a sense but I wanted it to be way cheaper, in fact, than an actual MacBook, even the MacBook Air being the cheapest of the line of laptops from Apple. With the research and everything that I did to find and hone in on one laptop above all else that met the criteria and also stood out amongst the rest, I landed on the ASUS VivoBook F510UA. And I really wish ASUS had a better naming scheme than the F10 UA. The ASUS VivoBook F510 UA met all the criteria and did it with flying colors because it had an Intel based CPU. I could swap out factory parts and add in different parts like RAM and things like that, which we'll get into. And it also was really cheap. How cheap you may be wondering? Well, for the factory refurbished version of the 510 UA found on Amazon, I only paid $449.99. This version came with the 128 gigabyte SSD and VME storage, as well as a one terabyte hard drive found within the laptop, which is a great deal. And the NVMe is actually pretty nice. There are different versions of the 510 UA on Amazon, which I will have links to all the products down in the description section below the video. There is a version with just the one terabyte hard drive. So if you're deciding to go with a new version of the 510 UA instead of a factory refurbished one, which I highly recommend because it ran like a champ for the factory refurbished one that is, you can just buy the one terabyte hard drive version of the 510 UA and just add in an even better SSD NVMe storage yourself. There is a need to swap out that Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card found on the 510 UA to get Wi-Fi and Bluetooth to work within Mac OS. So that cost me an additional $50, bringing the price up to $499.99. And then I decided to add in some RAM, but I'm not gonna add that into the total because it's not necessary. Really nice laptop and just adding in a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card to this Hackintosh build. $499.99 is a pretty good deal. Considering the cost of a real Mac and the cheapest of all the lineup for the Mac notebooks, the MacBook Air, you are going to be saving at least $500 for this Hackintosh build compared to buying a brand new MacBook Air 2018 or the late 2018 version from Apple. This video is not going to be a walkthrough or guide on how to actually make this laptop a Hackintosh. Instead, I decided with all the research and hoopla that I went through to make this laptop into a Hackintosh, I would instead provide a document with all the great guides that I used and everything that I used to actually make this a Hackintosh 
down below the video in the description section as a file for you guys to download and just have a one-stop shop if you decide to go with the 510 UA to build your very own Hackintosh with. Okay, where should we start? Where should we start? Ah, let's talk about what is actually found inside the 510 UA. Starting at the top of the list of the hardware found inside the 510 UA, we'll start with the CPU, which is the Intel 8250U processor. The CPU comes with four cores and eight threads and a base clock speed of 1.6 gigahertz and a max turbo boost speed of 3.4 gigahertz. Overall, the great thing about this CPU is that it just performs really well for the cost of the CPU, whether it's a Hackintosh environment or Mac OS, as well as Windows, this CPU is gonna do pretty well. Inside the 510 UA that I purchased, it came with an eight gigabyte stick of RAM DDR4L clocked at 2400 megahertz. The great thing about the VivoBook is the ability to add an additional eight gigabyte 2400 megahertz stick of RAM with just unscrewing the screws found on the bottom of the laptop. And once you get that bottom plate off, it is very easy to insert the new stick of RAM, which would then bring the total capacity found in the VivoBook 510 UA up to 16 gigabytes of DDR4L RAM clocked at 2400 megahertz for an additional 40 bucks, pretty dang good. With the back plate off of the 510 UA, this is where that replacement Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card comes into play. So all you have to do is locate where the M.2 Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card is and unscrew the M.2 screw that is holding it in place, detach the antennas, and then just swap in your replacement card, one, two, three, and it's really easy. And then you will have natively supported Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on the 510 UA as a Hackintosh. The keyboard flex on this laptop is pretty bad. And I say that lightly. I mean, this thing has some flex. And when you would compare it to a more premium built laptop like the MacBook Air, you can definitely tell the difference with this plastic build of the 510 UA. However, when it came to typing on this laptop, I actually didn't mind it too much and the keys felt pretty decent. Considering the cost of this laptop being sub $500, the typing experience on the 510 UA was pretty good overall. Leading us finally to the screen found on this beast. The VivaBook 510 UA is rocking a 15.6 1080p IPS display, which in my opinion isn't half bad. The screen's viewing angles aren't the best, but aren't the worst. And when it came to response time of the screen, I again was pretty impressed for how cheap this laptop was and the overall response time. So we know all the hardware found in the 510 UA, but what actually works on this laptop when it is built to be a Hackintosh? The OS that I chose for the VivoBook Air, oh yeah, that again is the name of this Hackintosh build, was the latest and greatest Catalina, and it ran flawlessly without any issues. It was really hard to find anything that didn't work on this Hackintosh build. The only thing that didn't work was the SD card reader and that fingerprint scanner on the trackpad. And of course, if you were wondering, handoff, airdrop, and continuity worked within this Hackintosh build of the 510 UA or the VivoBook Air. Now the part you have all been waiting for, I'm sure, the overall performance of this thing compared to a real Mac. That would make it worthwhile to spend the money on and use it as a Hackintosh, right? Using Geekbench 5 to test the performance for single core as well as multi-core on the VivoBook Air, the single core performance scored by the VivoBook Air was 729 and a multi-core performance of 2,304 as seen on your screen now with the graphs. Here's where things get really juicy when we start comparing it to a real Mac. Comparing the VivoBook Air to the latest version of the MacBook Air, which is the late 2018 model, the results are as follows. For single core performance, the late 2018 MacBook Air does outperform the VivoBook Air with a score of 736 in Geekbench 5, but not by much. Now when it came to multi-core performance, that is where things tip in the VivoBook Air's favor with a score of 1,733 for the MacBook Air late 2018 model, the VivoBook Air pulls away in multi-core performance at 2,304. Although the VivoBook Air does have an additional two cores inside of its CPU than the CPU found within the late 2018 MacBook Air, it doesn't really matter because the single core performance doesn't justify the price jump from say sub 500 all the way up to $999 for the cheapest version of the MacBook Air. I mean, think about it. It's almost a third of the cost for this laptop with all the parts 
that you would need to make it a Hackintosh. All in all, I really enjoyed building the 510 UA Hackintosh, the VivoBook Air, because everything just went flawlessly. There was no mishaps whatsoever, and all of the guides that were used within this build were just really informational and things just worked. It worked right away and adding in additional hardware was an ease as well. So what do you guys think? Do you think the F510 UA VivoBook or the VivoBook Air is worth the cost? Let me know in the comment section down below the video. I'd be very interested to know what you guys thought or maybe if you guys have a laptop in mind that you would like to see turned into a Hackintosh. If you guys have any questions, concerns, or feel that you have a need to comment, make sure to comment down in the comment section below or check out the Decoded Discord with the link to that Discord found down below the video in the description section. That's gonna do it for me today though guys. I do appreciate you making it to the end of the video if you happen to make it this far. If you enjoyed the video that much, make sure to leave it a thumbs up. If you didn't and you just wanted to watch the whole video, you can leave it a thumbs down I guess. But until the next time and as always, happy decoding.